Well, after a very inconsistent season, today we reflect on our first youth intake at Distillery. Will the season finish with a high off the pitch? And will it finish with one on it? Because despite our league frailties at times, particularly defensively, we could yet finish the year with two trophies. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 7 of Lifting Spirits with me, Daniel. We are back with Distillery for the final game before the league split. And we have also got a cup semi-final away at Dollinstown, or a neutral venue, I should say. But it's a very interesting situation. We've become incredibly inconsistent, as we have been all year. This time between being boring and aggressive rather than winning and losing. But aside from that, we've got our first youth intake. We found one thing we've got in common with Barcelona. So if you're looking forward to all of that, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe for daily FM23 content. We've got two long-term stories, including the head coach which will be back later today at 3.30. You can find all the key playlists, top threes and save ideas up in the eye above. But let's talk about distillery. And we're going to start with off the pitch stuff. Because we have had a similarity to Barcelona that I didn't expect to encounter in the Northern Irish third tier, which I probably would have done if I'd done my research. So let's just scroll down a little bit here and find out what I'm talking about. It's this. Distillery are deciding their new chairperson and it's done via election. So we've got a similarity to sort of Spanish La Liga football there. And I do wonder if it's maybe going to have a slight change on the philosophy, the expectations as we go along. We've got to worry about that sort of thing, particularly in a one club challenge. However, the positive before that happens is that we have been rewarded for a cup win and for making sure we meet our objectives this year. Because if we go to the profile now, having secured a top half finish, we were offered a new contract. 400 quid a week, the same we were on. A bigger promotion percentage wage rise, if we ever make it of course. And also an extra year on our contract. So there's a big positive for the start of the year. What we've got to do now though, is try and make it count and build a side for next season. At the moment though, we're one player down. Because if I go to the transfers... We are going to lose a player in the summer in Kieran Clowerty. We've mentioned all of our amateur players getting picked off slowly. But let's go to the history because one of those men that came in from Linfield, Karai Quinn, even though we said he'd only be an impact sub, they sent him back. One league appearance, one cup appearance, and a month later he was recalled. We'd only had about five games in that time. So very disappointing, very frustrating, but Karai Quinn is with us no more. Now let's have a look at the youth intake because... It was pretty good. It's a golden generation by this club standard, but will anyone be able to help us? Let's go and see. These were the set of players we were recommended to keep on, and if I show you, some of the best players have two and a half star current ability. So if I look at those two first, Darren Mallon is a left winger, another right footer who's inverted. I mean, he's okay. I don't think he is two and a half star by our team standard. Darren Mallon maybe got a bit of work to do, but a good player nonetheless. There was also Matthew Buchanan, who is a right winger, a bit more defensive minded, but again, a good base of attributes. But with us still playing for things this season, I don't really want to force them in too quick. Loads of players that are two star ability. The one that excited me most, if I'm being honest, is Cathal McGlynn. He is a two star ability goalkeeper who looks really well balanced, something we don't often get. Next up, we've got a centre midfielder. He is not bad defensively, but a bit aggressive. Just a little bit too aggressive for my liking as a ball winner. However, good in the tackle, good marking, good teamwork. And if he can get his physicals up before he turns 16, 17, we might have a player on our hands again. Andrew Miller is a number 10 who is the same two-star ability. He looks a real little gem. I'm looking at McVarnock as our backup at the moment and they're neck and neck. So for next season, maybe Miller gets a little bit of a run out in the squad. We've also got one and a half star players who I'll just hover over so you can see them. Chris Hassin, again, not far off the other winger we looked at. Moving down, we've got two-star Johnny Snoddy. He is a centre-half who I quite like the look of. A little bit slow, not the best positioning. But when you consider that Karai Quinn's been recalled as a right-back, when you consider that Stephen Curley is regressing quick at 38, this guy might be a solution long-term as well. Looking further down, we've also got one-and-a-half-star Leon McNichol. 
he is a pretty decent balance left back again. So looking at a backup for now that we haven't got in that squad, McNichol can certainly fill that void. And then further down, we've got Kevin Dunn, another left midfielder. He's all right. Nothing special, but a traditional winger, which is what we wanted to see. Further down, we've got an Italian called Brendan Kelly. I did find that one a little bit interesting, but he's not quite good enough to make it. So probably won't ever be a first team player. But looking to next year and the first team, we have done a little bit of work. And thankfully, the clubs that have been loaning us players have helped us out. We've got Craig Farquhar wrapped up for another year. As you can see, he's on loan until 2024. And the same for Jaden Withers, who is very quickly becoming the superstar of this team. Starting to look good. He's getting called up for under-18 action with Northern Ireland, as is Leon Boyd, the striker. We are starting to see some real talent from the lads on loan. And it's a good job because we mentioned Clowerty's going. You can see Ethan Warnock's wanted. McKee the same. McVarnock and Shearer still the same. Shearer did turn down one club already. And that means that we're going to lose a lot of our squad. So we've got to be able to replace them either with the youth players coming through or with two or three new additions to the squad. And if loan players can stay long term, it makes a real difference to our chances. So there's all the off the pitch stuff sorted. It's going to be chaotic for a long time. We know that here. On the pitch, however, it's just been bizarre. And we've mentioned it before in this save, inconsistency. But normally it's been between winning and losing. Whereas the last month or so, we've had really high scoring games and then boring nil nils. And I just can't quite work it out. So since you were last with me against Banbridge, we drew three all at home to Dolinstown. We had goals from Mark McKee, Leon Boyd and Pierce McVarnock as we came back after losing a two-goal lead. But thankfully, McVarnock got the equaliser. Against Armagh in the Cup fourth round, we had a 3-0 victory thanks to Boyd's brace and McKee. I don't know what it is about the Cups. We seem to perform so much better. Whether it's other teams not taking it as seriously, I don't know. But perhaps that's the only explanation I can think of. A 4-2 win followed away at Tobermore United. Two goals put us 2-0 up. Again, we threw away a two-goal lead. You'll notice the pattern in most high-scoring games. We go 2-0 up, throw it away, and then it's just whether we score late on. This time we did with Bobby Robinson and Josh Boyd. Brian Healy got his first goal for the club earlier as well. But really odd. And you'll see a repeat of that later. 0-0 draws followed against Lima Vardy United and Armagh in the league. But in between that was a 5-1 extra time win against Ards Rangers in the cup quarter final. Leon Boyd got a hat trick. We scored four goals in extra time. And I think that was just the higher level, the fitness paying off because we were crap for the most part of that game. And then going up to our last league game building into this, it's the same old story. 3-2 win. We were 2-0 up against 10 men after Mark McKee's brace. Somehow threw it away in the 90th minute before Piers McVarnock popped up in the 95th to make it 3-2 and spare our blushes. But I don't really know how to explain it. And I don't think it's worth trying to with tactical decisions and all sorts of other stuff. Because it is just the fact that our players aren't very good and aren't very consistent. And that is the matter of fact. We can't try and change that by being clever. Whenever we've tried to sit deep in either of the saves, we've struggled. Whenever we've tried to be a bit more in-depth tactically, we've struggled. So I think we just have to accept where we are until we can develop players. And hopefully that process can start this summer after a very good youth intake and more loans being extended. So today we go to the bottom side in the league. Always going to be a banana skin. And in Dolinstown, the team that we drew three all with, of course, in the cup semi-final. Three days apart, let's go and get into the first of them. Hopefully we can finish on a high in a regular league season. Because once we get to the championship group, we're going to be playing all the top teams. And that is a pretty scary prospect. So let's get through the tactical meeting. Our team is very stable now. When everyone's fit, when everyone's available, this is the 11. So from the last league game, we've got Boyd and Withers coming back in after international duty. Everything else is pretty much identical. The only slight tweak I've made tactically is that Grimley is now a covering defender, where we're getting done so much by these balls over the top, and the other stuff out of possession wasn't working. So what I've done is I've put him as a covering defender, tried to take advantage of his pace, and hopefully, as the clean sheets have largely shown, it is having a bit of an impact. So the team that we've picked for this game is Ethan Carey in goal, Warnock and Smith the fullbacks with Farquhar and Grimley centre-half, Lynch and Barr the midfield two, McKee just in front of them, and then Healy and Withers the wingers 
with Leon Boyd up front. Of course, that team with the loan signings means we have got a stronger bench than before. The likes of Shearer, Lynch returning from injury at last, and Josh Boyd all on there. McVarnock has been a bit of a hero recently too. And the number 10 role seems to be the goal producer. 32 goals between the two number 10s. Let's see if they can add to that today, and if we can finish before the split with a victory. One change for the host, two changes for us. Let's get through the dressing room, ask the lads to carry on where they left off, because despite being pegged back from two down in the last game, they did finish by scoring with the final minute. So let's see if we can do that again. Fingers crossed this one will be a little bit more comfortable. Well, we seem to be drifting back towards nil-nil territory here because 33 minutes gone and this is the first action we're seeing as Mark McKee gets it back to Warnock. In towards Boyd, was he played on side? Doesn't matter. They deal with it very well. McDermott has it between the sticks. He'll take his time here and can they catch us on the counter? That will be the question. Long ball over the top, grimly sweeping, exactly what we wanted to see. They nearly make a mess of it though. Ethan Carey comes out to get it. He can roll out from the back but instead goes long. And nobody's going to be there. I just want to remind you while we're here, because I mentioned this in both safes, just to show how much they're not working at the moment. Instructions, pass shorter. Just keep your eye on that as we go through the game. Mitchell's got the ball at the back here for police service as they play into Watts. Goes wide to the right-hand side. Some nice football there. They're playing it on the deck. I bet they're not even trying to play short football. Wilson back to Graham. Chips over to Cochrane. Flicks on. Defenders in no man's land. I'm lucky they've given that to Watts, to be honest, because I thought it was an own goal. 1-0 to the side at the bottom of the league. An inconsistency. It strikes again. And at half-time, that's how it stays. It's been a pretty awful match. But again, it's the same old mistakes defensively. We go two or three games where I think, right, it's solved now. We keep clean sheets. We deal with crosses well. And then we just blow out for a couple of games. It's so inconsistent. And I guess because when you finish the last game, you're playing with the top teams, you forget what it's like, don't you? As Healy gets the ball into Bart in the centre circle. Chips up to McKee. He's got him behind and he makes no mistake. I'll tell you what, since changing him to that attacking midfielder, the boy's been a revelation this year. I don't know how long we're going to get to keep hold of him, but we're going to make the most of every single second. It's 22 goals for the season now. We're back on level terms. Now, can we find the winner? Because that's what we need here. And we probably need two or three to win the game based on our defence this season. There's a long ball forward. Lynch heads away. McKee mops up, picks out Boyd. He's in one-on-one, -on -one, gets past the defender with a great touch. And it's a really good save by McDermott with his feet. Tips it past the post for a corner. And it was a toe tip rather than a fingertip. But McKee's now got the corner with an outswinger. Delivers to the back post. Up we go. We're not that strong in the air. Look at Grimley there. Wins it back though to McKee. And it deflects behind for another one. The pressure is ramping up. We are starting to look like a good side. Now can we take advantage of it? McKee gets the ball. Fully out swinger again. To the back post. Headed away. Only as far as Healy. But it peters out. And it remains 1-1 at the hour mark. And with just over 15 to go. We're going to make some changes. Leon Boyd will be replaced by Shearer up front. Healy on the right replaced by Josh Boyd. Withers on the left, I'm tempted to take off. I'll bring on Lynch for him. And then McVarnock, the usual game saver. He will come on. Oh, will he come on there? No, I don't think so. I'm going to bring Ballantyne on for Lynch. Give us a holding midfielder who can head it. And then with five to go, we'll throw on McVarnock. But at the moment, both Bart and McKee are having good games. And we're back into the final 15. Change is made. Smith's got the ball on the right. Finds Ballantyne. He goes long over the top. Shearer's chasing the sub. Hasn't scored in ages. And it showed in his finish. And now, I've just seen a name I'm a bit scared of. Tony Tamelti has just come on for the host. He scored two in that first cup game we played. Our first competitive match where this lot beat us 3-0. With a few minutes to go, I'm going to drop McKee back to Mazala. I'm going to bring McVarnock on number 10. We'll see if he can deliver the goods again. He loves a late winner, does Piers. Fingers crossed, there's another one on the way. Into four minutes of stoppage time. It looks like it's petering out. And again, we had the better of the stats, but we're not hitting the target enough. We're missing glorious chances. I mean, you saw the one-on-one -on -one for Shearer, even the one for Boyd before he came off. It really was a case of missed opportunities. We should have won the match, but we do keep the unbeaten run going. And that is a positive. As the league splits, we'll see what the fixtures look like. We stay in sixth place. Dolin's Town overtake us, in fact. But with four points clear of Banbridge, we're only eight points off the top. So with five games to go, who knows? 
And here we are. The other semi-final is Queen's University near the bottom of our league v Linfield Reserves. So for now, we think we've got a chance. We're probably playing the hardest team left in it, depending on who Linfield put in a backup team, of course. But let's go and get into it, because there is no guarantee we win this. We're an average side, we do make mistakes. But let's go and pick our 11, and we'll be back in a minute to run through it. Right, three of our loanees are ineligible today. You've got Barr in centre midfield, Healy on the right wing, and McGann a sub-centre half, which means... I'm going to have to play a tired Farquhar and then rest him at the weekend. It's the only choice we've got. And Josh Lynch, after injury, is finally back into centre midfield alongside his namesake. The rest of the team, yes, Josh Boyd on the right wing, but you'd probably be able to name the rest. The back five stays the same. Lynch, McKee and Boyd stay in. And Withers, of course, on the left wing. So just two changes. We should be all right. Now let's see how seriously Dollinstown take this. Because generally, we've been great in the cup this year. Two changes for our hosts, which suggests they're going pretty strong as well. We know Ferris is one of their best players, and Mark McCabe is one of the top scorers in the league. So this is going to be a very difficult test. They're probably the better side on paper. So let's get through the match preview, get into the first half, and see if we can hold on for a place in the final. Well, this has been pretty crap. 43 minutes in, and we haven't had a highlight until now. Josh Lynch losing the ball in the middle. And we're in a little bit of a dire shape as McCabe gets in. He always scores. He doesn't this time, though. I forgot the other change I made to my team. Graham came in in goal. He always does for the intermediate cup. And he's made a very good save for us there. Corner kick, which McCabe will take. One minute to the break. We don't want to concede now. Good goalkeeping from Graham. He's going to push carry all the way. But at the moment, we have to play the man who's playing for free. So after a late flurry, it looks good on the stats for Dollinstown at half time. But when you look at most of the clubs in the top half of this league, they've got wage bills of 500 to a grand a week. They've got two thirds of their starting 11 on actual contracts. And physically, from a training point of view, it does make a difference. And it also takes away the jeopardy of players going away. As Boyd loses out in the air, it's down for McKee. It's another one of these teams playing with a really wide pitch. But as of yet, we're not taking advantage of it. Roscoe on the right. Cuts inside, he's got plenty of options, goes back to his centre half, and he's into Quinn in midfield. He just goes back to Purdy again, long over the top. Ross goes past Warnock, he can't do anything about it, into McCabe. Good save, Graham. You should argue he did better with the finish, but you've got to save it, and he did just that. As Warnock gets the ball at left back, he's got runners down the line. Lynch is one of them from that Mazzala roll. In behind he goes, he's one-on-one, -on -one. shoots, good save, Buchanan. McKee's there first and hits the post. He's missed an open goal. It's back to Boyd. Blocked up in the air. Leon Boyd goes up. How on earth as a man with 22 goals missed an open goal from two yards? I don't think we'll be able to answer that one. But now we're going to need subs because there are some very tired legs out there. We'll wait till 20 minutes to go. But will we be behind by that point? It's Quinn with a flick on from a free kick. Grimley heads up more than away. Boyd loses out in the air but gets it second time. Now McKee can bring it clear. He's one of those who's a bit out of steam here. Got two runners down the line from him. Can he find one? Goes for a big switch. Lynch will get it. Finds Leon Boyd. Lynch running off him again. Back in centre midfield. And blazes over the bar. Oh, I thought that was going to be his headline moment. As it is, he misses. He's getting in great positions. But he just can't take advantage. Let's make some subs. I'm going to take off Mark McKee as the number 10 for McVarnock. I'm going to take off Josh Boyd for Aaron Brown on the right wing. The yellow card worries me. And then going further back, do I take off Lynch? He's knackered, but he's playing really well. Or do I take off Withers, who's not tired, but isn't playing that well? I don't know which one to go for, so I'm going to wait five minutes. Third sub incoming, and it's going to be the left wing. Withers off, Robinson on. Hopefully, it provides an answer. We just need to create something and take a chance. It's something we haven't done today. Got a decision to make in extra time as well. Do we take off Leon Boyd for the non-scoring Shearer? Do we take off the midfielder? It might not matter because Ferris has robbed Matthew Lynch and he's put it just wide. That suggests I might have made the wrong decision with a sub because Lynch, he couldn't even lift his legs there. As Graham gets it out to Warnock at left back. The big pitch is causing us massive problems. Purdy picks the ball up a centre half. We can't keep it. Gives it to Gordon. Chips over towards Liggett. Headed away by Farquhar. Aaron Brown attacked the ball. He's been not the same player since he's come back. Might be a candidate to go in the summer. As Grimley makes a mistake. You can see which legs are tired. He can't keep up. 
Ferris hits the bar. Warnock gets there first. We're clinging on. We need the 90 minute mark and we need to make a change. We've got no subs left at the moment, but one hit could make a big difference as Quinn on the left delivers. Grimley gets it away. Only as far as McVarnock, up towards Leon Boyd. Can you produce that moment of magic, the Linfield youngster? Takes on a centre half, but it's a three on one. Gets down the wing, holds the ball up. Two now advancing into the middle. McVarnock's one. Hits the bar. How many times has the woodwork been hit here? Robinson gets it on the left to Warnock. I forgot he'd even come on. He's been that poor. Neil picks it up at right back. His chances galore at either end. But somehow, it's back to another nil-nil. Extra time on the way. Let's get through the dressing room. Ask the lads to do it for the fans. Let's get to the tactics. Matthew Lynch off. Ballantyne on. Extra height. Extra fitness in the middle. Now we try and cling on. Fingers crossed. And we're back in the first minute of extra time. Leon Boyd scrapping with Purdy. You've got to be joking here. He's hit the bar again. How many times is the woodwork going to be struck? And how on earth has he missed that? Gets him from nothing. We're missing so many chances as Smith takes the corner. Options in the middle if he can find them. To the back post, headed away. It's a bit of pressure, but it ends with nothing. And now 10 minutes later, we're back with a free kick for Smith. Up to the back post and only as far as Buchanan. Easy for the keeper. He distributes long downfield. Big kick over the top. Thankfully, they've got no one up, but it still causes problems. Graham gets rid of it to Warnock. Into Grimley. Can we get the ball out? Because at the moment, we don't look good at all. And this, don't forget, I mentioned it in the first game. Shorter passing, but they're out of puff and they're ignoring the instructions. They're just hoofing it away as far as they can. But all it does is bring back constant pressure. And we can't seem to get that into our team. Farquhar makes a sliding tackle, but it was a tired one. Balls into Malone. He's beaten Smith for pace, but Smith gets back. Clears to Aaron Brown. Not see much of him. Can he deliver a moment of magic? He carries it forward. Good ball towards Boyd. Purdy heads away as far as Bobby Robinson. Delivers to Boyd. He's unmarked at the back post. And Leon Boyd has made it 1-0. In the 102nd minute, I'm not confident we'll cling on. But finally we get a goal. The two sub-wingers deliver. And Leon Boyd finally, finally takes a chance. Extra time half-time. Let's get into the second period. 15 minutes to go. And as we get towards the end of it, we will time-waste our backsides off. Let's see out this highlight and then we'll set it. As Warnock finds McVarnock from a throw. Farquhar long towards Leon Boyd. He's in behind Purdy. Could all but wrap this up. Into the box. Forced a little wide. Goes for an audacious chip. And it is comfortably over the bar. Instructions on. Time waste. All the time. Slow it down. Hold your shape. In fact, we'll still counter. We want some attacking threat. And out of possession, we'll drop off a little bit more. We don't want to keep getting caught in behind. Six minutes remaining. And as it stands, we're on course for a second cup final. Yes, it's two very low reputation cups if you consider the one we won earlier in the year. But it's trophies. And that's what we've got to do while we're not good enough for promotion. As Brown gets it to Lynch, who loses out in a challenge. First full game since he's back from injury. And he's playing 120 minutes. Wins it back there for Brown, though. He's putting the others to shame. Long to McVarnock. Flicks on for Boyd. Has to score. Does score. Leon Boyd makes it too. I've got to try and keep him next year. And more importantly, I think we can say it now. We're going to the Intermediate Cup final. We're going to have a chance at a Domestic Cup double. And I think we're going to be playing Linfield Swifts, which might be an issue. Because will Leon Boyd be able to play? I'm not sure he will. Let's tell the lads we're pleased with that and see when we're going to be back. Well, the cup final is on the 9th of May. I really don't know how the ineligibility is going to work because we're loaning him from Linfield and it's Linfield Swifts. But I imagine the game will be smart enough to put that together. It's our final game of the season after the final league game. So it makes sense to come back for both of those. The final episode of season one will be a chance to get our second trophy of the year, a low level cup competition against our parent club's reserve side. But before that, Port Stewart away in the league. It's a very outside chance, but I guess there still is a chance. Seven points behind second. Can we sneak up there? I doubt it. If you did enjoy this episode, though, inconsistency in attack and defence, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Can we win the double? I hope you'll join me tomorrow to find out. If you want to stay up to date and make sure you don't miss it, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Before the big one here, though, we'll be back with the head coach at 3.30 today. I hope you'll come and watch that as always. And I'll see you back here same time tomorrow for our second cup final of the season and our final games of our first year. Mm -hmm.